What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Projector. Just a little backstory. This projector started off its life as an Indiegogo project. Well, they've reached their goal, and now you can purchase this officially on Amazon for $2,800 at the time of this video. It is an ultra short throw projector, so you can place it inches away from your screen or your wall and get an image anywhere from 80 to 150 inches. Now, before we get it set up, if it's your first time on the channel and love audio and video gear, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Unboxing it, we get the user guide, a cleaning cloth, power cord, two batteries, and the remote control. Taking a closer look at the projector, you'll see it's got a built-in soundbar up front powered by Harman Kardon. On both sides are air vents as well as an adjustment dial on the lower corners to level the projector. Around the back are three HDMI inputs with one supporting ARC. There's a USB in as well as an audio and video input via a 3.5mm jack. Next to that is an optical digital out and a LAN input. Up top you'll see here on the corners are sensors which will shut off the laser if something crosses their path. In the center is the lens and above that is the power button. Now the VAVA is a 4K single chip DLP projector which uses the ALPD 3.0 laser technology. It's also not a native 4K projector as it does use pixel shifting to achieve its 4K status. Now for sources, I'll be using an Oppo 203 4K Blu-ray player and an Apple TV 4K. I'll be projecting on a daylight 92 inch screen with a gain of 0.9. I went with a lower gain since DLP projectors typically don't have the best black levels. For setup, I had to place my screen over my TV and I laid the projector on top of my center channel speaker. I know it's not the ideal thing to do, but it is only a temporary setup. To get a 92 inch size, I have the projector 6 inches away from the screen and the screen is raised 7 inches up. Now to get a larger screen size, you'll have to pull the projector further away from the wall. The further away you come from the wall, the larger the image will get, but the image will also go higher. I've got the projector at 33 inches from the floor. If I wanted to get a 150 inch screen size, I'd have to drop the projector closer to the floor. So the larger the image, the further from the wall and the lower you'll have to place the projector. That is of course unless you have a humongous wall and want the projected image to go up that high. Okay, once the screen is set up, just hit the power button and you'll have to pair the remote. Hold down the back and menu buttons at the same time and it should pair. This actually took a couple minutes to pair up so you'll have to be patient. It's also Bluetooth so you don't have to point the remote at the projector to function. Oh, and don't mind those lines going across the screen. That's just the laser messing around with the camera's shutter. This is the best I can get it. Next, you can see there are a few languages you can choose from. I'm going to choose English. Here's the network setup. After you're connected, it's going to ask if you're projecting on a wall or a screen. I'll be using a screen. And here's a little tutorial of how to mount the screen and align the image. Alright, first thing we're going to do is update the firmware. I've already downloaded the newest one from their site, so we're going to update it through the USB, which is under general. Just place the USB in the back and select the file. In the interest of time, as you can see, I got an error warning. So I downloaded the file again with no luck a second time. I then went to try and download it directly to the Vava, and I kept getting the spinning circle. Needless to say, this video will be done using version 1.25 firmware. Maybe at some point in time I'll do a follow up if I still have the unit. Okay, so backing out of this, let's check out the other settings. Under device name, you can rename it anything you want. This setting here is the motion detection. 
As I mentioned before, in case you get in front of the lens, it'll trip the sensors and the screen will dim down so you don't accidentally blind yourself. I'm going to keep this on. Here's the notification on and off setting. Input method is going to show you what Bluetooth remote is connected to it. There's a lock screen that I didn't try. And here's a 30 to 1 hour sleep timer. Here's the time format in either 12 or 24 hours. Language selection once again. And the about page. This does have 32 gigs of storage. And if you couldn't tell, it's running some version of Android. And that's it for general. Here's the source selection, 3 HDMI's and an AV. Now let's check out the display settings. For brightness you have standard and high. You probably can't tell in the video, but the image does get slightly brighter on high. And if you haven't already noticed, there is a little hotspot right above the lens. If you pull away further from the screen, then you won't get this issue. This right here is on a 120 inch screen and it's not there, so just keep this in mind for your choice of screen size. Alright, under image parameters you get a few sliders here. Or if you want, you can use the presets. They're standard, theater, colorful, sport, and custom. For keystone correction you have either 4 point, which is the 4 corners, or 8 point adjustments. For the purpose of this demo, I've overshot my image onto the bottom black border right here. If you want to fix that, just click on that point and you can move things up. Now you never want to use digital keystone because you're basically digitally moving the image around. Your light spill is still going to be there, which means you'll have wasted pixels you're not going to be using. So ideally, you want to get the projector perfectly squared with the screen. You can use the adjustable feet on the bottom by moving the dials, and you can also tilt the projector till it's perfect. Since mine is on my center channel, I had to stick something underneath the speaker to get it all even. Next, let's take a look at the focus uniformity. You'll have to tap either left or right in the remote control till everything looks sharp. If we take a closer look at the bottom left corner, you can see there's a little green here which I believe is a little chromatic aberration. I could never dial this out, this is the best that I got it. If I got focus at a good level on the bottom, then the top would be totally off. I found that the best compromise is to focus the top and let the bottom be slightly off. You can kind of see the green edges around these yellow boxes here as well. I mean this isn't a super high end projector, so it's not going to have flawless optics. To be fair though, you won't notice any of this while watching videos. Next up is the projection mode. Here you have the option of front or rear projection, and you can also set this up to be mounted on the ceiling. Under sound settings, you can turn on and off the button sounds. Here are some audio presets, and under audio out, you can use the inbuilt speakers, use the headphone jack, HDMI ARC, or the optical out. I'm just going to stick with the inbuilt speaker. Under Bluetooth, you can also output to some Bluetooth headphones or some Bluetooth speakers. I didn't have anything available, so I couldn't try this out. And lastly, under Others, you can rerun the startup tutorial if you want. Alright, now real quick. Even though this is Android based, it's not Google Android, so you won't get the Google Play Store in here. Instead, you get Aptoid. If you're an Android user, then you might be familiar with this. But this is your standard app store, so if there's a specific app you're looking for, then just do the search here, and hopefully you can find it, and hopefully it's available. Next we have a file manager. You can access the internal storage if you're storing any content on the inbuilt 32 gigs, or you can use your own storage. I've got the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer in 4K HDR, and the built-in media player does support MP4 4K HDR playback. If you hold down the menu button, it'll bring up some options. Here you've got the image parameter settings from before, and if we go all the way to the bottom, you can toggle HDR on and off. When you turn it off, it might actually look better in this video, 
but really it's very washed out looking. Turning HDR on on or automatically makes it look a lot better. Here you can turn on the progress bar which is at the bottom, or you can just keep it off. For playback mode, you can repeat all the files on your USB or loop a single file. This could be useful for presentations. Under audio effects, we can test out the soundbar. The speaker sounds pretty good. Now if you listen carefully, you can hear how loud the fan is. He's not Spider-Man. What is it with you and Spider-Man? He looks out for the neighborhood, has a dope suit, and I really respect him. Sub loser. The camera is about three feet away. For me personally, I find that it is noticeably loud. If your room is warm or gets a bit hot, and the fan kicks into high gear, and it gets even louder. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Okay, now let's check out some shots here. This is a shot from the movie Sully on the Apple TV. The black levels are okay, but if you look at the black bars on the top and on the bottom, they are kind of grayish. Also, have a look at the big fireball right here. It's bright, but lacking any highlight detail. If we hit the menu, you can see there's all kinds of different shades here. So we're going to have to drop the brightness down till we get a good compromise. We're at 60 right now, so let's try 50. And it still looks all blown out. Going to 36 looks pretty good, but overall brightness does take a hit. The outside scene right here just looks way too dim. Now here's a darker scene, which is just too dark at 36 brightness. If we go back to 50, you can see there's a little something right here in the background. The camera can't pick it up, but it's still kind of light looking, so I'm going to drop it down to 45. That looks decent. I can still make out that little thing back there. You can't see it in the video, but trust me, it's there. The skies are now a lot brighter than before. Now remember, I've got a 0.9 gain screen, so size and screen material will play a big factor in your image quality. This here is the Oppo 4K Blu-ray player settings. If you're watching a movie, everything plays fine with a 10-bit color depth. If you send 12-bit to the VAVA, then you'll end up with a pink flashing screen. So be sure you're outputting at 10 or 8 bits. Next thing I noticed is that you want to keep it at 422 or 420 color space. As you can see, the skies have a smooth gradation. If I switch over to 444, you'll end up with a huge amount of banding. So you don't want to send it 444. At 422, everything looks great. And one more thing, if you're using an Apple TV, you can't enable Dolby Vision or select Match Dynamic Range, since that'll pass Dolby Vision automatically if the content you're watching is Dolby Vision encoded. If you do, you'll end up with an all pink screen, so be sure you keep it at 4K HDR instead. The same applies to 4K Blu-ray playback. Be sure you disable Dolby Vision on your player or else you'll have the same problem. The VAVA just doesn't like Dolby Vision. Maybe a future firmware update will address this issue. Well there it is, the VAVA 4K Ultra Short Throw. I'm sure you noticed that I was only using a standard screen and not an ambient light rejecting one. But even still, with a lot of light in my living room, you can still see the image is pretty good. I know some of you want to know how it compares to the Xiaomi that I reviewed a few months back. Well, it wins easily for resolution since it's 4K capable, and I'd say for brightness, it was equal on both. The VAVA is rated at 6000 lumens, and that's at the lens and not what's reflecting off of the screen. It's still really bright even with the lights on, so for the extra spare change, I'd just go with the VAVA. Now, a couple negative things is that I didn't like the fan noise. The thing can get distractingly loud, 
I think my living room is about 70 degrees, so it isn't too warm, so I'm not sure why the fan goes into overdrive so much. Maybe it's just my review unit, but if you have one, then let me know how loud yours is. Also, why is there no black option? If you've got a huge screen, you're gonna get some reflection off the top of the projector. It's gonna happen, and it's gonna be distracting. Sharpness I thought was really good, but I wouldn't say it's razor sharp like some other more costlier DLPs that I've seen. Granted, those other ones were a couple grand more, but it should be noted. The way it handles HDR material could also use a little tweaking. It's either overly dark, or there seems to be a lot of clipping. I found that I had to adjust the brightness levels on a movie per movie basis to get some of that detail back. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it can be a hassle. As for black levels, they were alright, but I've seen enough DLP projectors to not expect JVC or even Epson levels of blacks. They're acceptable blacks, but not stellar. I also want to touch on the rainbow effect. I can personally see it myself if I want to, but I have trained myself to not pay attention to it. I think if you're super sensitive to it, then it might be an issue, but for me, it really wasn't a problem. Now, I was using firmware 125 since for whatever reason, it just wouldn't take the upgrade, so I'm not sure if the new firmware would improve on any issues that I've mentioned, so just keep that in mind. Overall, I think for the price, you're getting a solid performing projector with a pleasantly good performing soundbar built in. I don't think I mentioned it, but the soundbar is rated at 30 watts. It's got a nice sharp detailed image with some great colors, and it's super easy to get up and running. The main attraction though is that it is an ultra short throw, so if you want to get that 150 inch wall filling size without breaking the bank, and with 4K support, and 25,000 hours of lamp life, then this may very well be an option you should consider. It isn't perfect, but what is? Now if you guys have any questions on the Vava, then feel free to drop a comment. If you want to pick this thing up, I'll leave some links for it in the description down below. Be sure to give the video a like if you found it useful, and if you want to keep up on future projects, or have any questions, then swing by our Patreon page. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.